Improved Production Racing Association of Victoria is proudly supported by Prestige Hino, Australia's most awarded Hino dealer. Procut Tree Services, Melbourne's most trusted for tree and stump removals. Reach Rock Art for all your waterscape needs. DLL Photography and Design, complete website and e-commerce solutions. And Traction Tyres and Yokohama Motorsport, performance and safety for road or race. Hello everybody. It's almost season's end, which means it's time for Island Magic here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit, which will write another page in the history of not only this long and storied event, but the Matthew Flinders plate that goes along with it, which itself not only has a long honour roll from previous champions, but has been handed down through the years through several different categories. At the end of the weekend, who's going to lift the trophy? Is it going to be a former winner? Is it going to be somebody new? Or is it going to be someone that's travelled from interstate specifically for this meeting? We'll find out as we take a look through what happened across the weekend as we round out our 2023 season. Opposition here at sunny Phillip Island for Isle of Magic 2023 goes to Adam Poole. Adam, 38.99. Going to be up there with some of the best laps you've done in quality trim. Yeah, uh, thank you, Steve. Um, yeah, we went slightly quicker last year. Didn't quite uh, put it together, unfortunately. But it, I guess at this end, it, uh, you, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But yeah, pretty happy with the time. Yeah, just try, struggling to put it all together across all sort of parts of the lap. I know they don't do sector timing here, but there's some sections where you feel like you could have gone a bit quicker, but just sort of made a little error here or there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously we look at the data and I've just been looking at that now. And so we probably weren't as, as brave as we should have been through Hayshed and, and whatnot. So there's probably two or three tenths just there, but uh, 38 to the island and I car. Yeah, they'll uh, tick, tick for them. Yep, I would agree. Big tick box there. Now, importantly, you've had a different campaign. We haven't seen you much in Victoria this year. You were up at the, the Nationals at SMP earlier in the year, and you are the national champion. So, a belated congratulations for that. How was the weekend up there? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, oh, look, I'm, I'm uh, pretty happy and, and very, uh, you know, proud of the achievement, to be honest. Like, it's taken a lot of effort to do it, as everyone knows. But to go there and, and have a, a pretty uh, trouble-free, dominant weekend, um, it was great. The track, it was my first... Oh, first time there uh, this year and the track's excellent, it sort of it's actually suited the car quite well, I mean, a lot of people thought the, the car wouldn't really hang on to its tyres but we had Ravage up there, they kind of helped me tune it up and, and, and really the, how we drove the car to make it look after its tyres and to be honest like it, we were just sort of punting around pretty easily at the end of the day and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was good, thank you. Yeah. So something that's been missing in improved production for this year has been the two leader cars, and we're thankful enough to have a couple of them here at Phillip Island this weekend. Larry Merrifield, you've taken this one from New South Wales, brought it to Victoria, and hopefully you'll be doing some running next year, but first and foremost, you've got to break it in. That's right, yeah. No, it's a big learning curve for me, coming from the Excel to this, a lot more power, but having a lot of fun. It's a ball to drive. So it used to belong to Matt Harris up in New South Wales, and we know New South Wales has had a plethora of under two litre cars for, for some time. What inspired you to actually go and grab something different and step out of the XL? Um, I enjoy my front wheel drive. I've done rear wheel drive stuff before, and um, it's just sort of a natural progression from the XL, I suppose. 
you know, I, I, I really enjoy the way the front wheel drives handle. So, yeah. And you've been around the traps for quite some time, you know, 25 odd years in motorsport, started out sort of in HQs and saloons. So you've driven quite a lot of different cars, rear wheel drive, front wheel drive. Sort of, you know, are you getting your head around like which category you've sort of loved the most or are you still yet to sort of make that determination? Well, to start off, the improved production category is a great category and I'm really enjoying what's going on at the moment here. So I'd like to continue with that. So, yeah. Right, well, happy to have you on board. Looking forward to seeing if you can get a couple of rounds next year at this stage. Oh, definitely. No, I'll be doing the whole season next year for sure. For his second crack in two years at Isle of Magic as Max Demerick actually brought the Nissan back again, but he got a little bit of a, a new toy in there. I've heard you've got a, a sequential Hollinger gearbox this time around. Yeah, it's actually a H pattern, RD, yeah, H pattern, old school RD6. Uh, it's definitely helped the car a lot. It's definitely faster. Um, yeah, much better than a synchro box for sure. Because the last year, compared to your lap times from last year, how much quicker are you with a new box? Uh, probably, we did a 42 in qualifying and then the fastest last year was a 43.4 I did, so over a second, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Um, good one in that race though, you, you sort of gave Adam a little bit of a, an interesting manoeuvre down at turn 10 with a bit of a late lunge, but it only lasted a couple of corners, but you were saying that's probably the only opportunity we're going to have to pass him, if at all. That's right, I think the, the opportunity was there and you may as well take it, even though, you know, you haven't got a hope. Um, and obviously he just takes off down the straight, but um, yeah, no, that's racing. If the door's open, take it. Joining us all the way from Western Australia for the very first time here at Phillip Island is John Caligari. John, you brought your VNSS for a bit of a putt around Phillip Island. You've been getting better as the weekend's been going on. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. First time over here. It's, uh, it was a little bit daunting with all the high-speed corners, but slowly getting there, slowly getting the setup right for the track, and yeah, definitely bring the lap times down. Yeah, you started out with a 47.1 in qualifying, which is an improvement from your times you did yesterday. You just punched out a 46.5 in race trim, so definitely going the right direction. Yeah, definitely going in the right direction. Hopefully get it down into a 45 tomorrow and keep trying to chase Adam. Absolutely. Now, importantly, you've uh, you come over from WA. You've got the WA title secured, state title secured. But uh, two months ago, that car was in a pretty nasty state after an incident with the wall at uh, Wanneroo. Yeah, that's right. Um, bit of a start line incident and got put into the wall. Um, just pulled second, so about 110k an hour and did a fair bit of damage to the front end. Luckily, we found a decent panel beater and he pulled it out in about two and a half weeks and we had it back on the track. Yeah, and then went on to actually secure the title not too long after that. And thankfully, you're here. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was looking touch and go whether we'd get here or not, but we've got a pretty good workshop over in WA that looks after it, Race Talk Engineering, and they definitely pulled it through for us.
So continuing the stream of Hyundai XLs that have been entering the category this year is Chris Bodal. Chris, you had a little bit of an awkward moment at uh, Calder Park where the, uh, the bonnet flew up and hit the windscreen, but you managed to get the car repaired and back out here. What exactly happened at Calder Park? Um, mainly uh, the, the bonnet pins. Um, for whatever reason, um, going down the main straight, um, it just failed. The bonnet pins just opened up and let go. And um, yeah, folded right back, smashed the windscreen. Um, yeah, ran off the ran off the main straight. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, got new bonnet, new style, different bonnet pins, and um, put a secondary latch on the um, bonnet. To make sure that uh, never happens again. Yeah, it doesn't look like it failed last the time out at, uh, in race one there, going around the track at probably what's more of a high-speed circuit compared to, to Calder Park. How'd you go out there in the first race? Because it's sort of been your, your proper full round. You didn't get a full round in at Calder Park at all, but uh, how'd you go out there this morning? Uh, not too bad. Um, qualifying I found was a bit difficult, it just bore my car set up, tyre pressures, but um, yeah, come along better um, in the race. Um, still a bit slow, unfortunately, but a, but a bit more power would uh, be great. Um, in the motor, but um, but otherwise, handling-wise, it went well in the, in the race and um, completed the distance, which was good. So, yeah, 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 went all right, went all right. It's nice to have Kevin Coulson back after a couple of years away. Kev, you had a pretty unabated run and a pretty smooth sailing yesterday in race one, but uh, came in at the return road at the beginning of race two. What happened? Uh, the, in the dummy group, when I started up to head out, I noticed the alternator wasn't charging. I thought it just needed a bit of a rev to get it to get, to get it to start charging, but the, it turns out the wire to turn the alternator on had fallen off. So it took literally two seconds to fix it. It's a bit of a shame, but... Especially after yesterday, I had a good run. Pretty happy with that after being away for a bit, but what do you do? Yeah, that's exactly right. I guess as well, being away and sort of having a family over the last couple of years as well, sort of the maintenance sort of takes a bit of a second uh, nature to where everything else, it takes a bit more of importance. So easily something that's overlooked, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it come off. I can't even pull it off now, so I might have just knocked it when I've been doing something in the past or something, but it's one of those, one of those things. Are we hoping to see you back for a couple more rounds next year in 2024? Yeah, maybe maybe one or two. I've got another we've got another baby on the way now, so another little pest. So I think he's due end of February, so I'll miss the first round, but it might come back here, do a couple of rounds here, maybe Island Magic again. So hopefully. Chris Steele, you had the New Line Homes XL going quite well in that second race. We had a good battle with Brendan Sala. He yep. just pipped you at the line, though. Yes, um, lost him through turn four. Um, slow car in the oil patch, so had to back off and lost the toe in the car. But driving really well. He's going. He's Sala's going well, but he had an issue yesterday. But now he's back out, which is good. 
Now, you're one of the many uh, XL drivers that have come across and started running an improved production in the last couple of rounds. What's inspired you to change categories? Um, well, I've been around improved production a lot of my life because, as Rick Newman is my stepfather, but um, it's, I don't know, the atmosphere in improved production is great. I'm definitely going to cross enter in both categories, but this weekend's more of a shakedown for the new car I've just rebuilt as I um, rolled four times at the start of the year through turn one. So today's a shakedown weekend, make sure everything's going forward and doing the right thing. Now you mentioned Rick Newman as well. Rick been a long time supporter for, uh, for many, many years of improved production. So it's very much a family affair this weekend because you garaged with him. Yes, correct. So it's, yeah, it's first time we've actually garaged together because he's had a bit of quiet years over the last couple of years. But no, it's really good to have all the family here to do it together. So here's what they're all chasing this afternoon. It's the Matthew Flinders plate with thanks to Yokohama and Traction Tyres. It's been a plate that's steeped in history. It originally started with sports sedans and moved over to club cars before becoming the modern equivalent of improved production. It's got a lot of names attached to it, the likes of Wayne Wakefield, Leanne Tender, Ray Hislop, and of course this man here who won it in 2019, Andrew Butcher. So Andrew, I know you've sort of not had the best of weekends so far, but uh, what's it like to have won one of these uh, Yokohama and Matthew Flinders plates? It was great. I did, I did it with the uh, Stephen Bradbury style, needed a few blokes to uh, blow up engines and tyres and all sorts of things, but I'll take it. We, uh, we take the wins where we can get them. Absolutely. It's been, a, uh, it's been a bit of a difficult year for the club, but uh, we always end on a high note here at, uh, at Island Magic. You've been a Pyark member. You've won one of these trophies before. Um, this place has always delivered some great racing over the years. Even in a small field like today, we're still expecting a great race this afternoon. Yeah, it's been, it's been, look, the club's been very strong this year. The numbers on the track haven't been, and I think that's, a, that's just across the board in racing and in other participation. It's, uh, it's just a tough year for the economy, and next year's going to be the same, most likely. Yeah, we're looking forward to possibly getting some new cars out there in unders next year. Hopefully there's a good field in overs as well. And look forward to 2024. Yeah, we're really wanting to encourage the under two litre cars to get out of the shed next year. There's some new builds coming uh, in both overs and unders, but particularly in unders. So uh, it's a, it'll be a big year next year. Island Magic, we're going to make bigger next year. We'll have plans for that coming out soon. And then we've got the Nationals the year after. So next year will be a big preparation for that. Third place in the Matthew Flinders plate for 2023 is Lockie McBride from New South Wales. Lockie, this goes with the second place that you had back in 2019. Bit of a different weekend. I mean, the car looked like it was pretty solid, but they just didn't have the same overall package as the two guys in front. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those two guys are in a league of their own, mate. The, like Pooley has just been time after time the, the, the class of the show, and, and mate, Max kept him honest. So, um, yeah, congratulations to both those guys. Bit more work for me to do to try and go with them again next year. But, um, mate, I'm very happy with... with where we ended up at, at the end of the weekend um, in, in a quite, a, quite a strong strong field of, of good quality drivers and cars. Second place in the trophy race goes to Max Demerick from South Australia. Max, you went way, 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 way better than what you did last year and uh, you've got a big smile on your face, so nice to be taking home some silverware behind your uh, fellow South Australian. Yeah, I think we achieved what we wanted to achieve here in terms of lap times to get into the 41s. I think that was the ultimate goal. So I did one. So I'll, I'll take it. I'm really happy. It was good chasing Adam. Um, and it's interesting to see the strengths of his car and my car. 
and hopefully I can get a bit closer next time. <laughs> First place for the third consecutive year here at Island Magic is Adam Poole from South Australia. Adam, you've had a fantastic weekend. You broke your own lap record from last year a couple of times. The car's been out front all weekend, and I'm sure you're taking home uh, third silverware, and you're going to be back for more next year, potentially. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, pretty happy week. Good weekend. Car's been pretty quick. Uh, weather's been kind. Um, three in a row is pretty happy with that. We missed one in uh, 2019, but uh, we got free accommodation again from Ramada, so we'll be back next year and, and see if we can clean another one up. And so ends another racing season here in Victoria for Improved Production in 2023. Adam Poole taking home his third consecutive Matty Flinders plate. Please stay tuned over the coming months because there will be a schedule released for Improved Production Racing here in Victoria for 2024. It certainly looks like it's going to be an interesting one with several other events dotted around the country on the calendar to think about as well. So until next year, please have a very Merry Christmas and a safe and happy New Year. And we'll see you next year. Bye for now.